Right, lads, so Ericsson has received his plus two for not only his goal against Chelsea, but obviously Brentford winning the game means he got that plus two. And as long as he makes two appearances within the next four games, he'll go to a 93 rated card. So it is quite safe to say unless he gets injured, which obviously we hope that doesn't happen. But like as 99% chance this card will be going to a 93 and you have a look at his in-game attributes which I did before and dude this looks like a team of the season card we're still a month away from team of the season and this looks like borderline a team of the season card Lads, today we're looking at a card that's 5 foot 11 medium low work rates is the only issue I did find 4 star 5 star is absolutely phenomenal his pace of 87 is not bad he's got some phenomenal shooting with 97 shot power and 98 long shots his passing is definitely some of the best on the game 96 short passing 97 long passing 93s he's got 94s 96 curve there looks absolutely unreal dribbling wise is 82 agility sure it's not crazy but 99 ball control 99 composure and 92 balance 110 percent makes up for that his defending isn't actually all bad so if you were to play him as like a defensive or a box to box you could always go down that shadow route but we're going to be playing him as an attacker attacking minded center mid in a 3-5-2 which is why we've gone for the Hawk. A Hawk puts him up to 92 pace in game, uh, gives him a little bit of a shooting boost along with that plus 5 strength and plus 10 aggression with plus 10 jumping. As for the traits, he has got the flare trait. Honestly, boys, this looks like an absolutely phenomenal card. Now, if we go and load up Footbin here, lads, um, to have a look at his in games. Now, I think this card is ridiculously well priced. Like, if you have a look at his price, He's 80,000 coins on PlayStation, 75,000 on Xbox. In my opinion, absolutely phenomenal. As I said, with a Hawk on him, he goes to a 91 center mid and a 93 rated cam, which is kind of a route I'm going. I'm going to be playing him as a center mid, but I'm going to have him on get forward, so he'll kind of work as if a cam, like a cam, if you will. Um, you could also go for an engine if you want. I do think an engine is definitely respectable. Does put him up to a 93 rated center mid, but honestly, man, this is one of the cards that no matter what what chemistry style you use he's going to be very very good and it kind of just depends what position and what role you'll be playing him so as for how we're playing him in game 3-5-2 right center mid but we do have him on get forward all right lads so he's going to be in a very attacking minded player without further ado boys let's get into review right let's have a look at the team we'll be playing boys now we are on the road to glory um so it'll be a relatively tough match because we have got 81 rated steve mandander in it which kind of says it all but let's have a look at the team we will be playing as i said i don't really have to say it again but as a right center mid in a 3-5-2 you will notice that he will sure he'll be there defensively but he'll make those runs into the box now this is a full premier league side definitely a beatable team look at that look at that hey that would have been beautiful the dribbling once again so nice What a goal. one nil up, boys. A lovely start to the game there. Correa goes through. I think we've been a dominant player here as well. Um, we've been all over them. Ericsson's had a few chances. A very, as I said, trying out that ball control with him is so nice. Um, if people are wondering about the 82 agility and a 5 foot 11 body type, like, does it affect how he feels on the ball? Not on the ball, no, because his dribbling, his, like, ball control is absolutely, like, juiced up. It's maxed out, right? It's more just on the turn, right? So, say if you've got an opponent, uh, your opponent runs past him, it's more trying to turn with him quickly that's what's going to kind of you know bother you a little bit but honestly bro i've been really impressed with him so far he's making those correct runs forward as well despite having medium low work rates back to ericsson that ball out once again amazing pass as expected bro I was, it was worth a shot i think it's, it's appropriate. You, you guys can let me off. It's appropriate to try and go for a banger with this Ericsson card, all right? It's, it's in Ericsson's nature. When a card's got like 96 long shots or something, 97 long shots and like 98 shot power, it's just so tempting to take those long shots, you know? Because if it does go in, it will look absolutely beautiful. And obviously, he's the type of guy that will definitely be able to do so. Go on, back my point up here, Ericsson. Back it up. Okay. Ericsson once again. Nice ball control. Nice pass down to Eusebio. Come on. Back to him. Eusebio. Beautiful. Beautiful. That all that, that, that whole attack spring, uh, spring from uh, Ericsson's amazing pass to Eusebio as well. That's what he does offer, man. That, that, that's what doesn't show up with goals and assists like that is absolutely beautiful passes. What a ball. That is ridiculous. That is such a poor touch from Correa. 
But that is such a good pull from Ericsson. Wow. That is absolutely... That, that's crazy. I was like in my own half, basically. And that is pinpoint where I wanted. If only Correa could have controlled that, that might have been the best assist I pulled off this year. That is absolutely outrageous from Ericsson. Um, great few staff boys were 2 0 up. I think the second goal, he had a massive pass in. I, he might have actually gotten that assist. I think I think it was an assist because I went from him to Eusebio. I'm trying to remember um, if it touched someone else before Eusebio, but we'll have to have a look. But either way, man, he's a very creative mind centre mid, which is what you expect from him. Um, he's living up to his stats so far, boys. Really impressed with him Ericsson with interception which I, d I don't really have him in a role where I'm expecting him to get interceptions and stuff but he'll definitely pop up with one now and again I believe he's got like 68 67 interceptions which isn't bad as you can see he's getting into the box now this is a role we have him in does get tackled in the end there hey we win it back go on around the keeper shoot that this is so jammy oh my god I I would like to apologize to my opponent with how jammy that is but at the same time when i went to dribble around mendy there by the way great ball control from Ericsson once again gets on the score sheet when i tried to dribble around mendy initially for some reason it wasn't letting me shoot i went around him i don't know if you guys would have heard in my mic but i was pressing shoot i was pressing circle and i'm like come on is it gonna shoot uh mendy obviously got the ball and then it kind of Ericsson won it back and we got a very jammy goal but it's deserved it was deserved anyway um so we'll take it man That's beautiful from Ericsson, boys. That's another assist for him as well. The ball control, dribbling around. He's dancing around my opponent's defenders there. Double tap pass into uh, a lobbed pass, I should say, into uh, Eusebio there, who uh, volleys at home. Absolutely exceptional. I believe that's one goal and two assists for Ericsson now. Done well to keep the ball. Man, so close. Once again, we're trying to get one of those dribble goals. And feeling his dribbling, I think being 5'11", um, with the 82 agility, the dribbling in the box like that, it's the second time he's being tackled and it takes a little bit to kind of, you know, like, like Correa, for example. He's not as responsive as a smaller, more higher agility player like Correa in the box when you're trying to score a left stick dribble, fake shot, jammy goal like that. He's not as responsive as like a Correa, Neymar, Messi. But that's just down to being 5'11", so a relatively tall player, along with 82 agility. Um, don't get me wrong, his ball control is still really nice, but you know, if you're trying to score one of those spam the left stick dribbling in the box goals, like I've been, like, like I tried to do just then, nowhere near as responsive as like a Eusebio Correa, something along those lines. Hey, you know what? He wins us a penalty, so I think it's only fair we put him on the penalty. That was going to be an amazing run as well. That was going to be an absolutely phenomenal run. What is his penalties like? Um, 83 penalties, but we'll put him on it. Let's just look to the top right. And it's just cheeky a dink that down the middle. Hey, lovely. Uh, uh, lovely? Lovely. Yeah, man, what a performance. A 6-2 win. Um, when we were 2-0 up, my opponent brought it back to 2-1 at some point. So, maybe a little bit scared there, but we'll absolutely take that. Uh, Ericsson was phenomenal. Two goals, one assist. That's three goal contributions. Now, I want to have a look at his first goal and his assist to Eusebio. Look at this for a pass. That is phenomenal. That is absolutely phenomenal from Ericsson, and that's what that passing can do. Um, so, no, that wasn't an assist. Okay, so, yeah, that did not count as assist for some reason. Socrates touched it beforehand. I honestly cannot remember Socrates passing that to you, Sabio, but obviously he did. So, I'm trying to think where did uh, Ericsson's assist come from. It would have been this one here then, right? Yeah, Ericsson going through them all. Lovely ball control and a nice little lobbed pass into uh, you, Sabio, which is really nice. Um, as for Ericsson's first goal, honestly, love it. Very jammy, though. Right there, I'm trying to shoot. I was trying to shoot right there. We do get a very, very lucky, but at the same time, I mean, it's deserved, right? And then, obviously, him scoring us his penalty. Um, I enjoyed him a lot, man. He was Mr. Consistent. His passing was good. His ball control was phenomenal. Um, his pace was solid. I think this is a really, really top-notch card for only 80,000 coins. So, for the pros and cons, lads, uh, for the chem style, I think a Hawk is definitely the smartest thing to go for. It definitely does depend what role you're playing him in. If you're using him as a box-to-box, -box, you could debate an engine, but if you're using him as an attacking-minded center mid or an attacking uh, or, or a central attack, Attacking midfielder, then I think a Hawk is the way to go. Gives him that extra little shooting boost for his finishing. Um, also gives him that plus five pace boost onto his 
7 and a little bit of a physical boost via as well. For the pros lads, it's a big list and we could have even added more, but I've gone for 4 star, 5 star, 90 shooting with 97 shot power and 98 long shots, 95 passing, 96 short passing, 97 long passing. This man's got some of the best passing I have used so far on the game. 99 ball control and 99 composure is phenomenal and that's all the only cons, the only issue that I can somewhat see with this card is the medium low work rates. He's not going to always make those runs you want him to but I've always been someone that priorita prioritizes um, ins player instructions a lot more than I prioritize uh, work rates. So the medium low work rates, were they noticeable? A little bit but were they a problem? Not really. Um, now another thing I want to touch on his ball control is phenomenal. The actual ball at his feet is phenomenal. I know I'm going to get a few questions about 5 foot 11 and 82 agility. Um, yeah, left stick dribbling in the box, which what I went over before, is definitely not the most responsive with him. Like, he can do the job, his ball control's class, but he's not going to feel as smooth and agile on the ball as, like, my player of the month of Korea did, if you get what I mean. Uh, all in all, though, man, what an absolutely banging card. As for links, he actually hasn't got any strong links that I do recommend. He's obviously got, like, moments loud drop but I'd never really recommend for you to buy him. Um, so we're just going to leave that Lynx thing, you know, spare. But we're not going to put any cards there because he doesn't really strong link to anyone that isn't necessarily usable. Um, I mean, obviously, he soft links to all the Premier League players and icons. So if you can surround him with those players, you'll be absolutely sorted. For the rating out of 10, it's a relatively high one, but I'm going to give him a 9.5 out of 10. Hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe and let me know if you want to see reviewed next. See you later, boys.